Severe weather, snowfall, and colder weather, a system that keeps evolving day by day. What areas will be impacted? We have it next here at the Weather Farm. Welcome to the Weather Farm. This is your forecast for Monday, November 18th, 2024. For our Monday, we are going to see uh, severe weather across parts of Oklahoma down into Texas. This is going to be short-lived. We actually think that because if the trough had gotten caught up about 6 to 12 hours later, and this was during the daytime heating, we would have more of a severe weather outbreak. But at the most, we could have one or two rumbles of thunder, but mainly it's going to be heavy rain across parts of Oklahoma spreading into Kansas and Missouri. This is going to track to the north and east over our Monday, as we see from our future radar. So it's going to spread heavy rain through Kansas into Iowa and Nebraska as it makes its way up into Minnesota by our Tuesday morning. Down here around Louisiana, we could see an uh, isolated threat of severe weather late in the day on our Monday. However, that risk is still minimal, but it is something to bear that this is probably the most likely area along the coast if we see any severe weather on our Monday. As we look at Tuesday morning, we see that that low is now centered across parts of Minnesota. We look to our west and we see the 540 line. That indicates where temperatures at the surface are about 32 degrees. And we see these blue lines indicating temperatures below 32 degrees. As those move closer to the low, we're going to start to see that snow wrapping around uh, the area of low pressure in Minnesota and bringing snow to the Dakotas. While down along the coast, we are seeing heavy rains and a possible isolated severe storm uh, for parts of Mississippi into Alabama. Across the Ohio Valley, it's just going to be scattered rain showers for your Tuesday. Total rainfall on our Monday is going to be heaviest here across Oklahoma into west uh, the panhandle of Texas, where we could see two to four inches in these yellows and uh, darker pink colors. Where we see the purples, that's generally one to two inches of rain. And then we, elsewhere, the blue is about a half an inch of rain. We also look to our west along the Pacific Northwest. We have another atmospheric river making its way on shore. It's going to bring heavy rain along the coast and significant mountain snows for your Monday. But as we study the weather patterns and make our forecasts, as we look at the levels uh, of the atmosphere from 500 millibars up to 300 millibars where we f generally find the jet stream. So let's just jump right into that map. On our 500 millibar chart, here's that low that's making its way across the central plains up towards Minnesota on our Monday. Behind it, we have a slightly stronger area trough that's going to dig across the plains. But the difference from our forecast today is that this trough is not going to dig as far, far deep as we thought it was. It's going to generally skirt across the Great Lakes, across northern Illinois and Indiana. And as it moves east, that's when it's going to start digging deeper and intensifying as it gets into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and towards the coast. And it is here along the coast that we expect an area of low pressure to spin up and bring a stormy pattern to the northeast to end our work week. While in the meantime, for the upcoming weekend, we have another area of ridging uh, across the central plains, bringing warmer wet weather. If we look at the jet stream, we see a general same pattern here. Here's our Monday storm making its way here. We have a negatively tilted trough across the Rockies. That's going to make its way east uh, with the area of low pressure. But again, we have the strongest winds in the entrance region of the jet stream. And so we're not really seeing the intensification of that system. Even on our Thursday, we still see the strongest winds in the entrance region. And so we get an indication that this system is still intensifying. And it's not until our Friday that they move into the exit region and we get the strong area of low pressure off the Pennsylvania coast. So let's put all of that together and put our maps into motion for our week forecast. So again, Monday, we see that storm moving up into parts of Minnesota. As the cold air begins to build in, on the backside, we see that rain change into snow across the Dakotas along the Gulf. We do have an area of low pressure bringing some scattered severe weather. Out west for our Wednesday, we have another atmospheric river system making its way onto shore. This one's a little bit further south into northern California. 
where we could see heavy rain and mountainous snows in that area. Then our area of low pressure brings lake effect snows into our Thursday and Friday. And we have that low that we talked about spinning up along the east coast and bringing snows to the interior parts of New York and Pennsylvania, rain along the coast along those warmer ocean temperatures. That hangs around into our Friday and Saturday where we kind of just sits and spins there for the upcoming week. Total precipitation through our Friday evening is generally going to be, again, heaviest on Monday is going to be down here around Texas and Oklahoma, two to four inches. But we see those purples expanding into parts of eastern North Dakota and, and Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin. So a general one to two inches of precipitation. Down here along the coast, we also see an area of four to six inches of rain likely. Again, that storm that's going to move in on Wednesday, heavy, heavy rain along the northern California coastline. In those higher elevations, you could easily see 100 inches of snowfall. And then for the weekend, where we see the heavier snows again in interior and upstate New York, we could see uh, in excess of one to two liquid inches of precipitation. In terms of snowfall, staying with New York, we see by our Friday night, again, we could see total snowfall, six to eight inches is our thinking at this time. Same thing around the Dakotas, four to eight inches around central North Dakota, but as you get closer to the Canadian border, you could see upwards to six to 10 inches. And across the Intermountain West, we could see uh, snow easily two to three feet in those higher elevations. And as I mentioned in Northern California, with that system that's moving on shore on Wednesday, by Friday, you could see 70 to 80 inches, possibly isolated amounts in excess of 100 inches of snow. But the thing is, I don't want you to get too caught up on these particular snowfall maps, because the thing that we need to focus on is for the majority of October and into November, the United States, the lower 48, has been significantly warmer than normal. So a lot of this is going to have to fight the exceptionally warm ground temperatures for this time of year before any snow can snick, stick. And so we look at the snow depth map, and this will tell you the, the anticipated amount of snow that is on the ground at 7 p.m. on Friday night. So again, across the Dakotas where we see that the, the snowfall rates are going to be a little bit higher and it's going to be able to overcome those warmer ground temperatures, we could see two to four inches of snow on the ground, higher amounts as you get towards the Canadian border. Same thing across parts of upstate New York. We could see those snowfall rates uh, uh, being able to overcome the warmer ground temperatures. So we could see a few inches on the ground, especially up near Albany, making its way down uh, New, upstate New York. And again, in the higher mountains of West Virginia and Pennsylvania, a couple inches on the ground is likely. But even outside of the lake areas where we expect some significant lake effect snow, most of that snow depth is going to be melting with, by Friday night. And the thing about lake effect snow is it's so hard to predict, and this is why this particular map has trouble with it, because it is so localized and it's so isolated that even a shift of winds just slightly or a shift of the low pressure by 20 or 30 miles can have a significant impact on where the greatest amount of lake effect snow will set up. So this is going to be something we are going to be watching here at the weather farm over the next 48 hours. Where does that low develop on our Wednesday and Thursday over the Great Lakes? Where are the winds coming across the warmer waters of the Great Lakes? And that will give us a better indication of where those heavy snow bands for that lake effect snow will set up. So we do ask that you check back with us on our Wednesday for the latest information on that particular aspect of the storm. But one thing I do want you to notice here, we've been talking about this for a long time now, is the lack of snowfall and snow depth across parts of Alberta. We see a lot of, you know, not, not much snow on the ground compared to Saskatchewan, which is developing a very deep snowpack, even moving into western Manitoba. This deep snowpack in Saskatchewan and Manitoba is going to help fuel any Arctic air that might want to come down in December to maintain its uh, relative cold, cold impact as it moves across parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and into Wisconsin. If we don't get more snowpack developing across parts of Alberta, it's going to be hard to have sustained cold 
for the for most of the central plains into the Dakotas into Nebraska because you don't have it built up in Alberta. So this is something we're going to continue to watch, but we do see signs of two to three weeks out that this also could be changing and we could be building a bigger snowpack in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. So stay tuned on that. But the thing we want to talk about right now is down in the tropics. We've been worried about Tropical Storm Sarah. It has now been downgraded to a tropical depression as winds have decreased below the 35 mile per hour threshold. It has brought catastrophic and record-breaking amounts of rainfall to parts of Honduras, where they've reported cities with over 40 inches of rain over this past weekend. But Sarah is expected to continue to deteriorate and dissipate over the Yucatan Peninsula and pose no further impact other than heavy rain across that part of the, of the world. We might see some impacts here in the United States from Sarah, just from its moisture plume, as we get those strong southwest really winds ahead of that cold front making its way across the United States later this week. So it could pull some moisture up into areas along the Gulf Coast, but that would be about the main impact that we would see from Sarah. Well, let's take a look at our temperatures because we were talking this time last week of temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below their seasonal average, and we are not going to see that this week. If we look at our Monday, we see temperatures widespread 50s, 60s, and 70s across the eastern two-thirds of the country. We do see temperatures, even for this time of year, reaching the 50s in the Dakotas. On our Tuesday, as that cold air starts to work in, as that low is now over parts of Minnesota, wrapping that cold air on the backside, temperatures are cooling into the 30s. But we can still see lots of record highs being set across the Tennessee and Ohio valleys on our Tuesday, as temperatures could approach 70 uh, in Indianapolis. That cold air continues to try to make its way in, where we have the snowfall and the snowpack on the ground that will hold temperatures down into the teens and 20s across parts of the Dakotas on our Wednesday. But even once that cold front has moved through, we still see temperatures that are more seasonal for this time of the year as opposed to exceptionally below normal. And even on our Thursday, we see 20s across the Dakotas, 40s across the Ohio Valley, and 30s in the Intermountain West. Temperatures that are 5 to 10 degrees above below normal as opposed to what we were thinking this time last year. So the Arctic outbreak is not as intense as we were thinking, and that is why this system is so hard to, to forecast because most of it is going to fall in the form of rain. We will have some wraparound snow on the backside of these low pressure systems as they move east, but not to the extent that we were thinking possibly this time last week. And this plays out too as we look into our Thanksgiving week. Uh, most of the United States is going to be above normal for their temperatures, except up across parts of Montana into the Dakotas and northern Wyoming and Idaho, where you're expected to have below average temperatures, and you're expected to have above normal precipitation as we head into the last few days of November. We hope you've enjoyed your time here at the Weather Farm. We check back with us on Wednesday for the latest forecast. We hope you have a great day.